Well, she who doesn't see, only her jeweler knows for sure. Maggie, this is part of the promised gift. In the celebration of my godchild. A fake. An identical fake. That's how you did it. Amazing, isn't it? It's like they're twins. Except this one would melt under a kitchen match, and that one, that one could scratch steel. What the hell is going on, Dee? Well, I'm just trying to clean up a couple of loose ends here. I made a promise to Maggie when we both got the key sign. And I said that I would tell the whole truth about the necklace, and I will. Because we're sisters. But this is very, very painful. We're listening. Okay. Well, you see, this, this started off like a perfectly innocent little accident. You remember when I came by the house to pick up your mother's old clothes? Well, the necklace was just laying there. That's why I left you alone in the bedroom. Right, I put it on. And the class got stuck, and then you came back in the room, and I couldn't get it off before you got back in. So you walked out rather than admit that you tried it on. Roger, would you let me tell the truth? <sighs> it's exactly what happened. Only I couldn't face either one of you because I thought that you should think that I was trying to steal the necklace. So I just put the shawl right over it, and I left, and I had every intention of returning it. So that's, uh, that's how all this happened. Months and months of recriminations because of your stupid, cowardly act. I'm trying to confess. This is terrible, Roger, but please don't make it worse for me. No, it's bad enough as it is, Dee. Roger, let us speak. Mr. Maggie. Where did the fake come from? Okay. The fake one came from the pawn shop, and I just accidentally happened to find it, and it was such a perfect match that I felt like it was kind of divine providence that I had it and used it. Mr. Barnett's pawn shop? Yes. How did you know? Well, I just put a few things together, that's all. Look, I was desperate uh, to get some money, and I was desperate to do the right thing, and when Dakota took me to the pawn shop, and I saw this necklace, and Mr. Bonnet had just ripped the clasp on it. Oh, Dakota was in on it. How do you think this one got under the dresser? Not too much, Dakota. You were in on it from the very beginning, weren't you? Thanks, Delia. Look, I, uh... <clears throat> All right, I admit I knew what was going on from the beginning, but I also didn't think Delia would let it get out of hand like this. You what is it? Well, why did you get involved in the first place? Well, I thought Maggie could use a little hassling. That was back then. I was also trying to be a friend to Delia. Obviously, that does not work both ways, does it? I knew you think I could trade you, but I didn't... See, I didn't tell Dakota that I was going to do this, so he's a little off guard. Look. I tried to opt out a long time ago. Maggie, do you remember? I came to you, tried to tell you, but you weren't interested. He wanted me to tell the truth for ages. So, there I am, and I'm telling you. Yeah, well, there are ways of telling, and there are ways, Delia. You know all about that, don't you? Still haven't you ever had split loyalties before. Look, in the end of this whole thing, I was just trying not to hurt anybody. If I'm asked a question, point blank, I give an honest answer. Yeah, unless uh, the truth might hurt one of these folks, huh? Dakota, when are you going to be able to believe that you're an equal in this family and not a rival? Probably never. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Oh. I don't think you want to be here in the first place. All right, then you just go on. Okay. Now, he planted the necklace under the, the dresser for us to find. Right, right. The fake one, though, because the real one was hot. That's why the appraiser said it was only worth fifty dollars. Because it was. That means the one I threw at you was this one. So then I had both. And you got the real one back to the pawn shop in time for me to redeem it for ten thousand dollars. Which I later returned. Yeah, at a very opportune moment. You were also responsible for the pawn ticket sticking out of Maggie's purse. Yeah, I remember the little reading you had in the coffee shop. Yeah, he convinced Mr. Barney that Maggie pawned the necklace instead of you, and of course he would do anything for, the, for Dakota. He admitted that. Right, well, Dakota paid for his daughter's operation. Yeah, that's very touching. I have spent months with this secret eating away at me, and now it's finally out in the open, and there's no one who is happier about this, that this whole matter is put to rest than me. It's worked out perfectly for everybody, except me, that is. Roger, you have Maggie, and you have Olivia, and you have the Tangan. Maggie, you have the Colwood School, and you have Roger, and you have Olivia, and you have your family. Mr. Barney has a very healthy daughter, 
And I, well, I have a very worthwhile piece of costume jewelry that's worth about $32.88, which can dress up any of the gowns over at Deja Vu. And I have a lot of memories about this whole thing. The latest and best being the birth of my godchild, to whom I have this. And so, oh, my darling, I wish you a very fine good night. Oh, we're back to Dan Fox, Yes, see? But even then, I thought maybe the pressure he put you under justified what you did. But this, this is unforgivable. You destroyed everything that our... If I'd only known what was... You just calmed down. Celia, I point blank asked you about that necklace, and you lied to me. Do you have any idea of the anger and the frustration? You, D, you selfishly do... But don't debase yourself by, by more denials. Okay, do you remember something? Do you remember when it was Frank and you and me, and you said that is not looking for an excuse to break up, that a third party is the symptom, it isn't the cause. Did you say that to me? You taught that to me. That was then, and this is now. Well, you are a hypocrite, Roger. You were with me because you wanted to be with me. So you put the prenuptial agreement in the tax envelope for Maggie? Of course I did. <laughs> 